Hi guys, it's Alston. Today we have a special event with Derek uh, Perkins from Nozel. I know most of you guys have been interested on this since they have a great deal going around. In this video, we are just going to go over the introduction just to get your understanding of the Pacific tool and also learn a bit more about Derek and what is he has a magic planned on us for this tool and also show some uh, USB on Nozzle and it's been a really really exciting tool for me so we are going through that and answer any few questions you have regarding this tool also okay Derek just introduce yourself yeah thanks for having me on uh, my name is Derek Perkins I'm with Nozzle and we've been doing this since 2014 so it's been quite a while. Uh, real quick, kind of how we started. I was the VP of technology at SEO.com. Uh, we were a marketing agency, obviously doing SEO. And uh, you know, all the major brand uh, vendors for all the tools, the conductor, Bright Edge, all of those, you know, they were pitching us all the time. And it was, you know, astonishing to me. It was how expensive they were for not what I needed or wanted. It was not every keyword is created equal. And we have seen across the years, right? If even if you do have an expensive platform, nobody can afford to put all their keywords on it. So you end up with keywords all over the place, um, right? You've got long tail keywords that you may not need to track daily. Um, but we also have had customers that have very, very high volatile uh, search terms that they wanna track hourly throughout the day. Um, especially during events like uh, Black Friday or, you know, important sales events. So we came into the saying, how can we provide our customers all the data all the time, but be flexible enough with our scheduling so that right, you can have your keywords pulled as often as you want, right? Have thousands or tens of thousands or millions of keywords, um, but pull them on something that works for your budget. So that's really how we got started. And I'm a data guy by trade, and I just, you know, love BigQuery, maybe a little too much. Um, <laughs> no, that, that is visible, visible from just testing out your product. I was like blown away when I was testing the product because in my experience, I have pretty much tried around more, almost 30 to dif 40 different rank tracking software. And I logged into your platform and I was like overwhelmed with all the data and insights available inside that. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like rank tracking is, you know, almost a disservice. You know, we're monitoring the entire SERP. You can, honestly, you can use Nozzle and our BigQuery data set with all the keywords for just data mining. We have product SKU level information, pricing. We have flight information about uh, duration, uh, pricing, um, hours of operation for local businesses. Basically, if it's on the SERP, you'll see it and it's... Uh, yeah, uh, and available for you right there in BigQuery. Yeah, basically, uh, what attracted me initially, because to be honest, as I mentioned that I have so many rank tracking and as well as SEO tools in my flow. And uh, I, I don't really get interested when I see just a rank tracking solution in SEO because we all assume rank tracking is something basic. It should be like a set uh, add-on feature in all-in-one SEO tool because Ahrefs offers it, SMrush, and pretty much all the tools offer it. That was right. my uh, initial impressions on it. So when you got launched, I thought, okay, this is going to be another uh, rank tracking solutions, uh, but I do like to check out this stuff. So that's what I try to do it in this, and but. First thing I noticed was I checked out a bit background research on uh, your product and I went into Twitter and I was shocked to see so many pro SEO guys following your product. That's what uh, when I was like, okay, I'm missing something out there because I respect these guys and these guys won't be following for no reason, right? So that's what yeah. made me interesting. And I went and tried out immediately. I bought the code and I was like, there are so much data, even for an experienced guy like me, these things worth kind of taking a look into it. And that is the reason we are here right now. So it's not just another rank tracking, it's another level on rank tracking so far from my experience. <laughs> yeah, we've worked with a you know, number of kind of the you know, top technical SEO uh, for providing data. We worked with Kevin Indig for 
uh, one of the tech, tech SEO Boost conferences. We provided him with some data for his talk there. Uh, we worked with J.R. Oaks. We've done a pretty, he did a pretty deep dive on People Also Ask um, and connected it into BigQuery. He even shockingly got an entire uh, BERT model, uh, modified <laughs> distill BERT into uh, BigQuery ML. So yeah, lots of cool, th fun, exciting things, you know, pushing the limits of what, you know, the data is, what BigQuery can do. And, you know, we're excited to launch it to everyone. And I'm that's excited. really why we did that Sumo, right? We've had a lot of questions, you know, why is, you know, most tools are more startup and, you know, this is their first sure. launch. You know, why would an established company come and do this? Uh, we've really focused on enterprise. We've done a lot of custom dashboarding uh, to pretty much any BI tool out there, you know, Data Studio, obviously, but Domo, Power BI, uh, they all connect to BigQuery. And so we've, you know, done a lot there. But we really wanted to get this, you know, in the hands of everyone. You don't have to be a massive team with a full set of data analysts to really appreciate and understand the value of the data. So that's why we did this with, at AppSumo to say, okay, let's, you know, open the floodgates and make this data available to everybody. Yeah, actually, it's interesting. For example, when we uh, think about rank tracking, we essentially focus on main subject like keywords, searches, and ranking position changes. That is the most we think about when we consider something rank tracking. But Nozzle is something introducing us to more that uh, the search uh, pages are consistently evolving. It's no longer just 10 results we are getting on uh, Google searches. There are so much going around, featured snippet uh, sections, people also ask videos, news, shopping, all these things. And that's what's interesting. And we will go through it when we are showing the product. I also thank you, Sam, uh, for joining as well. And he's probably will be your biggest customer if he likes the product because he likes a rank tracking too. So. Oh, great. great to meet you, Sam. Hello, Derek. How are you? Good. Okay. In, uh, in that case, let's uh, let's quickly go over the... Uh, just give us a brief introduction on how you differentiate yourself from competitor products and what is your... Just gives us a brief introduction, then we can go and start with the product demonstration. Sure. So, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, you know, we have all the data available in BigQuery and... Most companies, a lot of them will charge you extra to get API access to your own data. Almost none of them will give you access to the full HTML. Uh, none of them will give you access to you know, the full top 100 results, uh, every single one. You know, they're truncating data and only it's like, oh, here's my one domain, please give me my rank. Maybe, and then you have to pay extra for competitors. You know, we've taken the approach of we pull that data for you once, and then it's yours. You have access to all the raw data on BigQuery, all the competitor data. You don't pay any extra for competitors, for brands, for anything. Um, and a pretty cool thing that we have, because we do keep all that data around, if you do end up adding a competitor or you know someone's that wasn't on your radar all of a sudden shows up, you can add them as a specific brand competitor that you want to monitor and we'll process all of our data back you know through the beginning of your account and it'll be as if you tracked them from the beginning there's no penalty to adding brands or competitors after the fact that's cool that's cool really exciting. and we have a lot of different roll-up levels so you know all of my owned brands my single brand uh, you can look at the top ranking domains subdomains and even down to the individual url level Okay, I think most probably will understand when we see the product actually on the demo because I also tried this feature. I understand the possibility, but still confused on how to do it myself. <laughs> so, uh, Derek, you can go ahead and share your screen and showcase the product. All right, here we go. So I've got us logged into our Nozzle Nozzle account. We've got a lot of kind of test uh, cases in here. Um, as we're, you know, eating our own dog food and, you know, testing things out. Um, but the core and nozzle, we have a team. It's like a project in Ahrefs or SEMrush. Uh, you know, if you're a, 
an agency, this is where you would set up all of your clients individually. And then this is every single team is separate on BigQuery. So if you do end up wanting to share access, uh, you can do that with secure permissions down to the BigQuery level so that you know nobody's seeing data that doesn't belong to you. Uh, let me dive in real quick and I'll show you uh, some of these dashboards. So by default, we're looking at uh, brand type owned. So in the back end, let me uh, pop this open real quick so you can uh, see exactly what that means. We've got owned, neutral, competitor direct, and competitor indirect. And those are all configurable. And let me come to the settings. So we've got brands set up here, right? We compete with, you know, the Ahrefs of the world. There's also, you know, Backlinko is more of a, you know, news type of site or, uh, you know, do research. So we've got all these different companies uh, that we're monitoring and we've labeled them all with a specific brand type. And you can even dive in to say, okay, you know, what are we specifically monitoring? So for Nozzle, uh, if we click in, we're monitoring to see not just our domain, but when does our Twitter account show up? Uh, when does our Facebook account show up? And then we can even get deeper into that. Uh, YouTube is traditionally very difficult to add or to monitor when you show up on the SERP uh, because there's no convenient prefix that you can look at. Um, but you can add every single uh, YouTube video that you have uh, so that you can attribute all of that to your brand and see you know, exactly where you're ranking, uh, how much SHRP real estate you're covering. And there's no limit to the number of brands you can have. There's no limit to the number of properties inside of a brand. Uh, it's pretty awesome in my, uh, in my obviously biased opinion, right? But a brand is clearly much more than a single domain. It's actually true what you're trying to say that it's no longer about one single website URL. We try to find, have the multiple different properties, as you mentioned, YouTube, a video, and or a page on a sub uh, on a big website where we don't care about the ranking for the domain, but we just want to focus on one that particular pages. This looks really important. Exactly right. If you've done some guest blog posts on another site or let's say you're selling products on eBay or on an Amazon store, clearly you don't want to track Amazon as a domain, but your specific store and all of your individual product URLs, you can see if those are showing up on the search. And that is incredibly powerful. Exactly. And so we're looking here at the brand type owned. So you can switch between uh, this roll-up value. Uh, you can See, there's, we've got six different roll-ups uh, that choose the aggregation level. We can go down to brand. Uh, and now we're just going to look at nozzle itself. Uh, and you can look at any of those other brands we configured. And then even down to the brand property. So if we click uh, here on the brand property, uh, we're going to see if we, uh, or sorry, that'll be in the competitive side but you can look at each one of those properties individually. So you don't lose any uh, clarity of data by adding extra brand properties. You can you know, get the right level of data for what you're uh, trying to do. So if I understand this correctly, we can create groups or folders of different property according to our own wish or how we want to think, uh, categorize it, then go and view this data in a comparison view or just in an individual level as well. Uh, yep, so here we're zoomed into the individual. This is how our Facebook page uh, does, which Unsurprising isn't well because we don't work on it that much. <laughs> Let me click over here to this share of voice. Um, so uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Sam. Did you have any question? Yeah, I actually have a quick question. So uh, I own a multiple location like uh, businesses in Canada, and yep. uh, we have our like all locations. They are like similar keywords, but they are different. Like you know, like for example, like they end with the city. So like uh, phone repair and the city yep. name. So what you're saying that I can group them separately and I can track them uh, even though they are a little bit similar, but they are ending with their own city 
on yep. their own categories, right? Rather than like putting uh, all the keywords in one project, I can have different project and I can put different keywords in there. Make sense? Yep, exactly. And this is another thing uh, where if you do have overlapping keywords, you know, maybe you serve some similar customers um, with most other tools, uh, they're going to charge you extra, not just for competitors, but if you, even if you do have multiple properties, uh, we try and do everything in the customer's favor. So even if you do have the same keywords across multiple teams or clients, we're only going to charge you once for it, you know, no matter how many teams it belongs to. Really? Yeah. That's actually yep. good. We're not <laughs> trying to gouge people, right? <laughs> if you've got your data and we want you to then be able to dig into it and use it. Because a lot of uh, agency owners, like, you know, they have their own niche, like a uh, furniture store, and they, they just target furniture store or, or real estate agent, right? And there are yep. very similar keywords they use, right? So that yep. will be counting as uh, one keyword. Yep, as long as it's the same phrase and location and, you know, the same uh, surf, you're only going to get charged once, no matter how many clients you're using it for. Hmm. Well, that's very yeah. generous of uh, you. Basically, I think the highlight of this is that we are not going to get charged separately for competitors or just uh, multiple different web properties, which we are tracking within the same resource, which we are getting as universally. Am I right? Yep, exactly. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so we're looking at, you know, all of our own properties, uh, you know, versus competitors indirect and zooming into a brand property level. Uh, this is where we're going to see, you know, unsurprisingly, the dot coms do rank the highest. Uh, but once you get past those, Ahrefs is really killing it uh, with their YouTube videos. Uh, showing this specific SEO for beginners is showing up in 430 uh, SERPs that we're tracking. So great work on that, Ahrefs. Um, so when, video uh, when you mentioned 430, that means are you tracking 430 different keywords or something else? So right up here, you can see in this keyword group that we're looking at here is 62,000 keywords. Ah, okay. And these are all the keyword groups that we've added. And so at any point, if we wanted to, uh, you know, drill down into a specific set, we can come in and say, okay, here's the priority phrases, ones that, you know, we think are important to us. Uh, these are going to be enterprise related, um, hourly rank tracking. And so Nozzle for our priority phrases, we're actually doing pretty good in competing with Ahrefs and Moz. So, actually, 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 it's a surprising for example. You're not just having a test project, but you are having a full scale project with over 60k different keywords and testing and using your own product. That's really good. Yep. And we've had some, uh, you know, really good results uh, as we've been doing it. So that's always great to see. <laughs> True. But not Can only, right? So, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, are we also like uh, kind of track like local keywords too? Yep. So or we don't have them here in this data set, um, but you can track keywords down to the city, the zip code or postal code level. Uh, you can get as, as uh, granular as you want. Oh, thank you. What I was just gonna say is here, these are the brands that we already said that we want to monitor for competitors, but you can, again, change this roll-up value to domain. And now we're gonna see, you know, this doesn't take into account the brands that we set up. This is all of the data that we've collected, what domains are doing the best. And unsurprisingly, google.com does really well. <laughs> you won't be shocked to know that. And that's mine. <laughs> yeah. And so you can see, this is great for competitor discovery. We're looking at 3000 domains here and you can paginate through and see Again, literally every domain that you care about. So and there is no limits on how many competitors or additional web properties we can track under one credit? Correct. 
right? And you don't have to set anything up to get this uh, view right here. We just, by default, you can come in and uh, without setting up any brands or competitors at all, uh, look at that. And you can even drill down into the individual URL. So let's see what URL is performing the best. And, you know, obviously there are, you know, millions and millions of keywords sure. ranking across this, and it's, you know, pretty fast to pull that up. So rank active is the URL that is showing up for the most keywords uh, across this data set. So again, super granular, it makes it super easy to understand what the full landscape looks like. And also quickly, can you explain what are the data we are seeing on the chart itself? Yep, so this is pretty straightforward. They're all described here, keywords, how many keywords do I rank for? Uh, you know, that's here. On the side, this is showing us in different rank group buckets. So the dark blue is, they have six, data box has six keywords ranked in position one, one keyword ranked in position two, and so on and so forth. So you can see that distribution. Uh, Link Assistant has the most number one rankings uh, in this data set. Got it. And then rank, we're all familiar with. What is your average rank? Uh, we are also calculating in the, if you don't, if a URL doesn't rank or a domain or whatever uh, roll-up view we're looking at, if you don't rank, we're at calculating in 101 so that uh, you get a true rank and not some random website that ranks, you know, number five for only a single keyword across your 62,000. Clearly their average rank is not five. Okay, makes sense. Then we've got some pretty cool, unique metrics to us. We've got pixels from top. So this is obviously gonna be similar to rank, but we're measuring on the SERP itself, uh, how far from the very top of the HTML all the way down to the result. And so this, right, rank can sometimes be subjective as Google continues to add these new SERP features. Uh, you know, some of them take up a ton of vertical space and this lets you get a really bird's eye view of how is the SERP moving? And just to uh, just to clarify that point for non-techies who are watching, basically uh, the reason we are calculating pixels, these things is really important is that uh, SERP tracking is no longer just 10 results. You are not just having SERP results from the 10 years or so because Google has been consistently improving their search results, adding all this additional snippet, featured images, it, number of Google ads, all these so many features are having. So no longer if you are just ranking on first position, that not, does not necessarily mean you are getting all the uh, search uh, uh, snippet or, or search uh, part of that query into your uh, website, but rather if you have additional other uh, snippets, all the other stuff, it essentially means you are going to reduce get reduced number of volume for that. So these pixels or the above the fold CTR options, these are really advanced. And moving show forward, if you are looking for an advanced uh, way of tracking all the results, results and visibility of that results, these are really important. Yeah, that's a great description. Specifically on mobile. Uh, it's pretty common with ads and everything else that shows up that the first organic listing is two or three screens down. It's exactly. you know amazing that they get even clicks anymore. <laughs> uh, for some of these next uh, metrics, I'm gonna actually click in. We're gonna drill into an individual keyword. And let's do We're gonna look at uh, Google Desktop and hourly keyword tracker. So we're gonna have these same metrics listed up here. Uh, there's a table here in the middle that shows uh, the specific columns and exactly what we've parsed out of that. Um, but the coolest part I think of Nozzle is this is what we call Nozzle Vision. So this is the actual raw HTML. You can uh, you know, click on the links 
and you have access to this HTML. Uh, so you can always go back in time and say, okay, what has Google been changing? And then you can overlay nozzle metrics on top of this. So we've got rank and pixels from top here. And you can see, obviously, it you know increases as it goes down, um, pixels from top. All the way down, they've got a little mini map here on the left that you can click to zoom in uh, and scroll around. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to overlay some different columns. So uh, beyond pixels, we've got clicks. And this is actually, let me switch to a SERP that had some search volume so that we can get the full effect. So we're back to just rank tracker. And um, this is going to be similar. Uh, you know, this has got a little more advanced uh, features. We've got people also ask here. Uh, we've got FAQ schema being represented. Um, and so let's go back and let's look at clicks. So we've got a pretty sophisticated uh, click-through rate algorithm that takes into account the actual uh, coverage of pixels uh, in addition to what sorts of SERP features. So you're getting a very custom click-through rate per page. And then we're multiplying that by the search volume uh, to give some estimated traffic or clicks. And you can see that obviously uh, most of the clicks are going to the top result. Um, but what's pretty cool about Nozzle 2 is uh, a lot of other software won't tell you all the information about these individual uh, FAQ schema that's in here. Uh, you can see here we've got uh, little site links, and every single one of these is available for you to query so you can see what site links show up. They've each been attributed click-through rate and estimated traffic uh, all the way down the page. That's pretty cool. That's actually really so uh, so if I understand correctly, for example, if first I have a website, I have a search ranking of one, and I just don't have main URL, but I do have some uh, fake snippets below my site query. So it's not just I'm going to get the uh, estimation for the main URL, but automatically Nozzle will take all the sub uh, which is ranking, and it will also get into the estimation part. Exactly. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. <laughs> we can you know, filter this. Let's see if Link Assistant um, doesn't look like they rank for more than uh, one place. But look, so we filtered to Ahrefs. So they rank here. Um, but this little mini menu down here, we've got uh, these images are cached on Google side, and so they don't always come through, but there's an image that is coming from ahrefs.com. And then down here, ahrefs also has their, uh, this is their feature requests. And so all of those can be attributed to that single brand, you know, even though they're multiple on the SERP. So are we seeing the top 100 results here, or is it more? Uh, this is the top 100. Got it. So is it is it pulling it out globally, right? Or is um, it like, like the results, like uh, uh, because I, uh, for example, like uh, I have a guy in US, uh, and if he wants to track the keywords that I'm giving him, so is he like like what I'm trying to understand is like I know you you uh, I think you're from US, right? From states, right? That's correct. Yeah. So I, are you are you pulling the data like globally or is it like how is it, is it pulling it locally? So when you schedule your keywords, uh, if we again come back up here, you're choosing right now we only support Google. Uh, you're choosing which device. We've done desktop, but we also support uh, Android phones, iPhones, and also Android tablets and iPad. So you're choosing that. You're choosing the language that it's being tracked in, and you're choosing, you know, the we've chosen country level tracking here, uh, but you can get down to, like we said before, the city or whatever uh, zip code or whatever level you want. 
Got it. I, th I think to just, to, uh, just to expand on that, basically when we create the project, we can set the location and the device. So the surf, uh, which page we are seeing is based on the, the, the location we set, we see the results for it. Yep, exactly. Oh, got it. Thank you. So I think that's pretty awesome. And there's this PPC value where we take the number of clicks uh, in estimated traffic and multiply that by the uh, Google AdWords cost per click to say this is about the dollar value of this each of each one of these results. So Link Assistant would have to pay $95 a month, essentially, to uh, have an ad here. So this uh, search volume and estimated PPC value, all this data are automatically uh, gathered, and we don't need to pay it separately, right? Exactly. You're never going to get nickel and dimed. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So lastly, on these metrics, uh, I'm going to show uh, so not we're not just doing pixels from top, but we've got two new metrics that I think are really awesome, uh, above the fold percentage and cert percentage. So you can see these boxes that we've drawn. Uh, these represent the you know height and width of the result. And so we're summing that up and comparing that to the total pixel uh, area available. So you can see pretty quickly here, uh, this above the fold, you know, it cuts off to zero right there. So this is, especially when you're trying to communicate to someone who isn't an SEO or, you know, doesn't have experience, maybe you're reporting to a client or you're reporting up to a, your boss or a CMO. Above the fold is a, is a newer metric that just makes sense. Yeah, and basically for any people who don't understand about the fold, it's basically a, a concept when it comes to web development, web designing. And these are the results where you immediately see uh, once you load up a page and see. And when we say something below the fold or something, usually it involves taking some time to load or just scrolling down and to seeing that result, specific result. Yep, exactly. And then cert percentage is the same idea. We're measuring that, you're taking that same measurement, and then we, but we're applying it to the entire SERP, not just uh, an arbitrary cutoff of pixels, pixel height. So those are unique to Nozzle. And honestly, I think, especially as Google continues to add more and more SERP features, that will be much more valuable to report against uh, compared to rank. And also, if I understand this correctly, this uh, screenshot with the analytics, you are recording for each single day because I'm seeing the date as October, August 31st, 21. So if I want to go to 30th, we can go to that also. Yep, you can look at any day and you can go back in time as far as you want. You can also do side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> That's I'm good. just blown away. <laughs> you can zoom in. How did you come There's up with all this? <laughs> scrolling. Uh, we can zoom in or out to, you know, whatever makes sense to kind of get a feel for how the SERP is changing. So yeah, how long the history or the time span available for this? Uh, is forever long enough? Wow. <laughs> I'm shocked. So you're saving all this data on the back end for every single day. That's correct. That's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Crazy. OK, thank you. I, I have one question. So uh, I mentioned something. Uh, let's say when the Google algorithm changes, like which happens uh, here and there, and then you rank, you rank, you are up there, and now you're down there. So is there any like metric that it shows that the algorithm did change? I, I think I saw it somewhere. Uh, I don't remember the tool name. Uh, but that also shows that why your ranking went down or went up because of the algorithm. Right. It's hard to say, especially from a tool level, uh, you know, exactly why you may or may not have dropped. Um, I have seen some tools. It's in our roadmap. Um, if you're talking about uh, on top of here, overlaying annotations of 
like kind of a yes, vertical exactly. line. Yes. Yep, that's on our roadmap, both to show okay. Google algorithm changes, uh, as well as letting you annotate your own, you know, here is a website change. Uh, we also hope to synchronize that with Google Analytics, so that if you're adding annotations there, uh, that you don't have to double ent enter them here. Okay, and we uh, just got a quick question. Uh, the time period uh, available to change is added after the domain is added, right? Correct? So after the domain is added, is that what you said? Yeah, basically it will track all the history from the point we add uh, to the domain to the project or create a project for it, right? Uh, it's based on the keywords that we're pulling for you. So, awesome. so when you come, let's go back here into the this. This is our keyword manager, and you can have uh, we call them keyword sources. That's kind of a weird name, but it's most other tools just let you enter keywords, um, but we plan to introduce an ability to sync top keywords from Search Console, where we'll pull the SERPs for you based on that. Uh, syncing in keywords from BigQuery and other data sources. Uh, we also have a template generator. Uh, Sam, you mentioned, right, that you're, uh, a lot of people are templating out, you know, law firm or dentist or whatever it is in a city. And so this is one that we're working on where you can add your base phrases. So let's say, you know, lawyer, law firm, and add those up here. And then we have these uh, templates that allow you to template all of that expansion out and then track them in each of these locations. This is crazy powerful, guys, if you can't so, understand it. Quick question, <laughs> okay. So I so I got two keywords in there. Uh, I think phases or keywords, I think that that's what you put in, right? The, these are yep. two keywords, right? And yep. now, even though I'm tracking in a different cities, is it gonna count as a two keyword or is it gonna count as like more? So this is, you can see this number here, 56, because yeah. we're tracking yeah. on two devices. Uh, if we uh, you know, change that, the number will drop down to 28. Um, and then we're, so we're taking the phrases times the device times the location and then that is then getting templated into each of these uh, phrase templates. And you can add your own custom templates. Uh, you can you know, get rid of them. But that's a pretty powerful way to you know, manage local keywords across a lot of different places. And the total tracked keyword count is the pool we will be uh, getting uh, uh, consuming for this search query to take place one day, right? Exactly. So you can pick uh, whatever schedule makes sense again, right? Some keywords are important. You want those daily. Other ones you might pull one, once a month or only at once a quarter so that you can track, you know, thousands or millions of keywords, but without breaking your budget. Makes sense, makes sense. So if we want to consume our tra credits, let's say for example, we can schedule it for a longer time span that by reducing the cost. And if we want some important, we can do much frequently. Yep, exactly. Got it. And we're not just limited to these schedules, we can do any custom schedule uh, if you're interested. Got it. So this is a pretty cool feature that it doesn't quite work yet. That's why it's uh, listed as an alpha feature, um, but it's gonna be pretty powerful and it should be launched here pretty soon. And it's not something like a, going to be like an add-on or something, right? It's, it's just no, gonna be- in the No, no extra cost. I just wanna make sure there's a lot of things <laughs> that are happening in the LTD world now. Uh, a lot of add-ons and you know a lot of surprises we get. So uh, good to know, right? Uh, that's actually a point that I wanted to bring up on this call is, right, I know there's a lot of uh, issues with companies that are, you know, stopping these lifetime deals, they're cutting features, they're, you know, changing details. making people angry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah that's, that's one of the things, right? So because I, I, I do have a rank tracker that I'm using 
uh, and there's going to be a lot of add-ons in there, right? Um, yeah. Which is fine, but the, the thing was, uh, was I was disappointed that nobody was getting a clear answer, right? Are these add-ons included? Like, we are giving our feedback. Uh, I'm being talking to them. I'm telling them, okay, can you please uh, add this feature or this feature? Like, we, all the LCD community is giving their feedback to help them shape the product, right? And yep. then at exactly. the end, uh, we know that we are not getting any of that, <laughs> even though we sh- right. help them shape the product, right? So that's why I meant, uh, brought this up, uh, uh, because it's good to know, right, uh, if, if there's going to be these things going to be included. Right. So we've got, you know, outside of the lifetime deal, we've got, you know, lots of different uh, packages, you know, up to thousands of dollars a month. Um, but what we don't have is feature limitations across them. Like I said, we aren't trying to make you upgrade on arbitrary, oh, I need this thing or that thing. We want you to love the data and pull more keywords because you can't live without it. So the only pricing or add-ons is if you wanna consume more uh, keywords than uh, you have in your deal is you'll just pay extra uh, as you go for each of those plans. So just to clear uh, that all the features are universal for all the plans. So we will be getting all the updates. The only differences between the plans is the number of pulls, uh, which essentially means the number of keywords we want to track. Yep, exactly. And a lot of other LTDs, they when you if you do want to upgrade, you have to lose all of the value that you got from your LTD, and we're not going to do that. So let's say you buy tier three of Nozzle and then you decide, hey, I actually want 40,000 uh, pulls a month. You could then do this advanced plan and you would be getting the 21,000 pulls here in, plus the 21,000 pulls from your LTD uh, AppSumo deal. So you'll never lose those credits even if you do decide to upgrade. Sound good. Um, I have another. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of things going on right now. <laughs> you got me excited. And another thing too is to that point, we've had a lot of questions about whether or not we're going to introduce some larger tiers, uh, like a pro or a pro plus tier. And honestly, like I think the easy thing to do would be would be to say, sure, yeah, we'll add that. You know, here's you know, a $300 and a $600 LTD and take that cash up front. But the reality is I think too many companies that are launching, they take that cash and then realize that it's not sustainable. And then that's when they start cutting your features, uh, shutting your plans down. And we don't want to do that. We only want to offer, we want to be committed and support these AppSumo customers, like you said, right? You're giving great feedback, you're helping us grow the product, you're spreading the word, and we wanna make sure that it's a sustainable plan for you and for us. And we know that we can do that for the three tiers that we offer, And but offering anything above that, right? It would be hard to make that work, uh, you know, for years and, you know, decades ahead that are, that we hope to let. So uh, we aren't going to be introducing any higher plans, um, but that's uh, that's our reasoning is we do want to be sustainable and we don't want to be yet another company who is yanking out their uh, features from early customers. Um, I have one more question. Uh, any plan bringing uh, uh, like a geo grid option for local uh, rank tracking? Uh, we've definitely thought about it. We've seen uh, a couple implementations of it. Um, it's definitely something we could do. Uh, we haven't had a lot of uh, interest, um, but it's definitely something we've thought about. And if we you know, get enough feedback, uh, we do have our at feedback.nozzle.io slash roadmap. Um, you can see this is where our public roadmap is. I'm actually a long-term AppSumo user myself. I'm not just a newcomer. FeedBear was an AppSumo deal. Uh, I've been buying deals for years, so. Uh, uh, the we're definitely being, supporters of the program. 
yeah the reason being uh, that was one of the thing that i was very interested in because i do have local locations right and i want to track and i like those i, I know there has been a lot of issues going on with local viking not pulling the right data for the grid uh, but it's it gives you a, like a good uh, you know like track you know because i think gmb is so powerful now for local business and i yep. think a lot of people in the seo is just trying very hard to just rank on gmb and that's where that's where i wanted the uh, the geo grid and i was disappointed uh, so i would be nice if there's uh, enough people will upvote for this uh, i don't know how it works in terms of cost wise because uh, i think there's an option to connect your own api and yeah so i think should be good <laughs> if you had it. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely uh, you know, look into it. We'll add an item for it to our roadmap. Um, each of those polls on the grid would be a separate keyword poll. Um, so just like uh, doing hourly is going to you know increase your usage a lot, uh, so would the geo grid because right, you're grabbing a, a unique separate SERP for each of those uh, coordinates but it's definitely uh, something I, I think I, got, I understand yeah as long as as long as that option are available for the users they can decide whether how much pulling they want to do for the different keyword and time duration and it will be a huge important factor like and i think probably sam is now like convincing his 500 other friends to buy and upload that feature specifically to get that into as soon as possible <laughs> All right. I well, let's get the, it over there. A huge I, I think there's a huge potential for it because sure. there's, uh, I think, um, uh, uh, local Viking and Bright Local. There's a few companies who are doing that. And I think the only reason people sign up for that is just to get that grid, right? Right. And uh, it, it, I, I did sign up for it. I used my all credits. Uh, but this is something that, that I'll be very interested in. Um, I think there was uh, one thing was left about the reporting uh, for agencies, if there's an option, or is there an email we get like on daily basis or, or, or weekly basis to, to, to know our tracking, if it's uh, tracking is going up or down? So we don't currently have a, uh, an email tool. Um, what we've... Historically, what we've done, I think I mentioned, right, we've been an enterprise tool for the first seven years of our existence. Uh, and so we worked a lot with these other BI tools. And so typically they would be uh, connecting via BigQuery um, in Data Studio or uh, Domo or Power BI or Tableau. And most of those tools have email features. And so that's kind of where, why we don't have it today. Um, but that's very high on our list. We'll definitely have uh, that type of alerting available uh, before the end of the year, uh, not just by email, but to Webhook, to Slack, to Zapier, so that you can wire it up to uh, you know anything else that that you care about. Cool. And just to add a few points, uh, can we also expect to see something like a PDF export or CSV export? So you can already do a CSV export right here. You just click the export button, and thanks to the demo gods, that <laughs> failed. <laughs> but uh, let's uh, let's. That's the curse of a live stream. <laughs> yes, it is. So I'm actually going to jump over here to a different dashboard real quick. Uh, this is. Oh, brand property. I want to be on brand. So we're looking at nozzle again across our priority phrases um, for the last month. And then let's try that again. Export. Uh, it should just work. You'll see it up here in the top right spinning and it's completed. And then you can just download. We'll pretend that that never happened. And you just click that and download it. Hey, it's in live. You can't remove that. <laughs> yep. So uh, this dashboard itself is, uh, you know, real quick. We've got all these 
uh, same metrics that we looked at everywhere else, um, things like estimated traffic. Uh, now we can pivot that horizontally so that we're looking at this stream graph over time, showing how much of the total estimated traffic came from each of these groups. And so you can see, you know, like I said, things have been improving across our priority phrases. And, you know, even just in the last 10 days, we've gotten, gotten a lot of number one and number two rankings. That's great. And then as we scroll down this page, still looking at Nozzle, this is a breakdown of all of the keyword groups that we have. And you can see how each of them is performed both over time and in each of these buckets. You can uh, look at all of those and paginate through there. Uh, segments, we've got a lot of uh, built-in segments where you can add as much, much granule to your filtering as you want, similar to a segment in Google Analytics. Uh, so you can click and filter to those. And so this is going to help you see where the most change has happened across your segments. And then finally here, this is you know the same type of view, but for URLs. So what URLs have grown the most? And Nozzle.io, the homepage, you know, unsurprisingly is number one, but we've also had a lot of growth in uh, our features page. And you can even see here, there's a LinkedIn, you know, company Nozzle page that's showing up. So that's the value of uh, brand, tracking your whole brand. And then finally, uh, you know, we're finally to the actual keyword table. This is for your standard rank tracker. This is the only view they have. And this is where you can get comfortable and say, okay, here's all of my keywords and their search volume. Here's the top ranking URL. And then again, all of the metrics that we were looking at above, uh, how that is performing and what keyword groups it belongs to. So a lot of data, every table and chart will have this export link so you can download them separately. And uh, are this uh, your rows are clickable or does it when we click some other data appears or something like that? Uh, so if you click on any of these, it'll drill into that single keyword dashboard that we looked at before. So where you can performance of this individual keyword over time. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then back on this overview uh, where we just were, you can also click on the keyword group, the segments or URLs that'll take you into full page views uh, of these data sets. Any other questions while we're here? Yes, I have. So see this uh, uh, competitor analyst uh, 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 you showed, is there an option to like, uh, like because I, I see a lot of things going on, like is there an option to remove and have another like, you know, set of metrics showing? Or can you like customize this window or no? Uh, right now you can't. Um, uh -huh. Also that just froze on me. I don't, but uh, that is in the that is in our roadmap is to let you okay. customize which of these metrics you see. Okay. And um, uh, I'm just because I know a lot of people like uh, uh, feel overwhelmed when they see all these things, even including I think uh, Alistair was a little bit like, you know, okay, what is going on? Is there planning to bring like uh, some sort of like an easy mood, like you know, maybe you can switch off like this, like. Like for people who just want to like, you know, have a, like some sort of easy or like have some, I don't know, just the idea I'm throwing in. Uh, yeah. So this is the overview dashboard that simplifies it down a little bit. I mean, there's still a, a lot of data in here. Um, and but just showing you, OK, this is we're looking at our owned brands and exactly just real quick, you know, uh, what's performing well, here's the best, most improving keyword groups, here's the keywords that have lost the most, keyword groups that have lost the most rank. So 
there's some of this, uh, our plans going forward uh, as we do uh, continue to iterate on dashboards. We have a lot of data. Like you said, you know, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Uh, we plan to be introducing a lot of uh, single purpose dashboards that are, you know, not quite so overwhelming. So write a, a simple mode uh, if you don't want to see all of it together. Uh, specific uh, SERP feature highlights. So a PAA dashboard that'll help you hopefully build out your content calendars uh, as you see what questions are being asked across all of your keyword sets. Uh, again, that'll all be uh, filterable by your keyword groups and your segments. Um, so yeah, the, we, hear, we hear loud and clear that there's a lot of data, but we need to make it a little bit easier, especially for that onboarding experience. So we're doing our best to take the fire hose and you know let you adjust the nozzle on it. Wink, wink. It's true. Uh, I, I, th <laughs> I think there's still... <laughs> I think this tool was built uh, for the enterprise users. Now you are trying to move towards to the normal solopreneurs or SMB audience as well. That's what most uh, will be finding complex. They see the value in the data, but sometimes it's hard to digest all the information we are getting. And some are even finding difficult to start creating a project and start tracking as soon as possible. We, are, we get lazy, right? So we just yep. need to do something really quick and start using it. So that's what. So better to optimize uh, application or introduce uh, onboarding uh, where users can understand how to use each single feature so they can get the maximum out of it. Absolutely. Depending, when did you sign up originally? A couple of days ago. Okay, so you got the worst onboarding experience. <laughs> I think we've, even during this week, I think we've added one or two onboarding steps a day so that the onboarding experience now uh, gets all of your brands and keywords set up so you don't have to kind of be lost in the system or go to see the help documentation. So we've that's been our number one takeaway so far is make it easy to onboard. Thank you and we've that. already, already um, implemented and are still obviously trying to iterate forward. Uh, do we have like a team access in there uh, and then, you know, divide the uh, keywords to, you know, sub accounts or something like that? Uh, not currently, um, but that is, you're talking about uh, if you have a multi-team project exactly. and restricting their usage. So there's exactly. not currently um, restriction in place, but you can come up into the billing section and there's a usage tab that will show you how much each team is using. Uh, so you can monitor it. We do plan to introduce uh, per team limits, um, but that's uh, not currently available. But currently uh, the project we can give for specific access to team members, right? Different projects. Uh, also not yet. Uh, back here on the roadmap, uh, if we go look at some of these feature requests, uh, user permissions is one uh, that is, I just added it earlier today. We've already gotten a few votes uh, to restrict that access and make it you know, more shareable. You know, if you let clients access it. Makes sense. So I don't have any specific timelines yet to share on that, but we are working on it. Okay, is Sam? Do you have any other questions? So I can take questions from the chat. Yeah, you, you go ahead. I think I ask him enough questions. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be your biggest but, customer. But you know, I like I like that he uh, Derek has a lot of things that he already what I asked. He already has a uh, roadmap or it's something they are working on it. So that's 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 a good thing, right? So at least uh, we know that we are you know on the same. Uh, uh, we're talking about the same thing, right? So, well, and I like it when uh, you ask questions, right? If you didn't care, you wouldn't ask any. So, no, trust me, I can go and go on and go on, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll give people a fair chance to interact and you know get the questions keep coming. 
Okay, let me go through some of the question. I think you answered most of the stuff. Uh, if I find something different, uh, first, uh, this one. Uh, is there any <clears throat> global keyword research or global location when it comes to tracking the ranking? Um, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, basically, uh, for example, we have an international project. We don't have uh, like focused on this particular location. I just wanted to track uh, as a global when it comes to search volume, PPC and everything. Is there some uh, insights into that? So no, Google actually, they used to when you request the search volume table, uh, data from the keyword planner, they would return two separate values, a global search volume and a country level search volume. And I can't, I don't know exactly what year, but it's been, you know, a good five or six years that they haven't returned that. Uh, it's just at a country level now. Um, even rank tracking at a country level is starting to, uh, Google is doing their best to try and geolocate you and give you local results. Uh, we're definitely seeing that more and more. So no, and I don't believe anyone can do a global ranking. Um, the best you could do really is, right, pick your top markets, top countries. And again, that's where the custom scheduling can come into play. Uh, you could say, right, I'm in the US, I'm in India, I'm in uh, Europe, in France, or you know, whatever your country is. Right, I'm gonna track those daily, but guess what? Grab all the other EU countries once a month. Uh, you know, grab the rest of you know the major countries in Asia once a month. Uh, that would give you you know some of that global uh, feel that you're looking for. But again, I don't. Google has made it near impossible to do global, and they're almost trying to take that away from the country level as well. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Sam, do you have a question? No, uh, actually, I agree with him because that's what is happening right now. And the more focus is going to the local rank tracking. Uh, and that's where everybody is like going after right now. Even if you are like trying to track Amazon, like Amazon, they got one in India, they got one in Canadian, in US, you know. So these are all become like uh, country level of law. Uh, Rank tracking. That's what. That's what. Uh, it's working. That's what the Google wants, right? So, and uh, I just three three separate questions, but everyone is asking something similar, like uh, how easy it is to get started using it. I see three different questions, but most of them as the same intent about it. If possible, Derek, uh, can you give us uh, like how easily you can create a project and start adding keywords and getting started immediately. Can you quickly show us? Yeah, we can do it right now. So you can just come to nozzle.io and then hit the start trial button. And um, I've got a lot of different workspaces that I am part of, but let me uh, start from scratch. So you'll, you'll come here, uh, this is where you start if you Buy it on AppSumo. There will be a little AppSumo welcome screen up here showing you what plan tier you purchased. Uh, you can sign in with Google, with Facebook, uh, or email. We don't have a password. This is the magic link uh, passwordless thing, kind of like Slack has, um, that prevents us or anyone else from having your password. Uh, it's a little more secure. Or you can choose to sign in uh, with Google or Facebook. And once you've signed in, you know, we just get your name, uh, and then you're right into making your company. So, you know, my awesome company is uh, now what I'm doing. Uh, it's creating a slug. That slug will show up in your URLs. It will also show up in your BigQuery data. So, you know, if you care what that looks like, you, know, you can tweak that. Uh, Right, if you do SEO, you are familiar with page slugs. Um, create the workspace, uh, then you can create a team. Uh, if you're in-house, you know, 
no matter even if you're in a giant enterprise, often one team is going to be enough. Um, but if you're an agency, obviously you'll have a lot of teams. We default this to the same name as your workspace because uh, hopefully even if you are an agency, you still track your own stuff. Even though having been at an agency, I know that <laughs> often you ignore uh, your own SEO or your own <laughs> all of requirements. But so you'll create your first team here. You can create other teams elsewhere. Uh, this is where you can now start adding keywords. And so, you know, I'm a rank tracker. I'm an enterprise rank tracker. You can also add keyword groups here. So this is an enterprise keyword group. This is a tracker phrase. You don't have to, this is optional, um, but you can, if you're copying and pasting in from Excel where you already have keyword groups, uh, you can bring in your keyword groups like that. Pick your device, your country, and your schedule. And now you're done with your keywords. And then now we're gonna create our first brand. Uh, again, we're gonna default this to my awesome company. Um, and then we can search by domain. This is where we're gonna pre-populate your brand and search. So we go out, uh, we hit an API that returns, you know, whatever they can find about you. So we found Nozzle site plus uh, these four others. And you can click and say, oh, I don't really care about Crunchbase. And then you add those to your brand and you can get more sophisticated here. We're actually gonna simplify this step tomorrow, speaking of making onboarding easier. Do that, and now we're done. Start tracking, uh, and we'll kick ourselves uh, into my awesome company, and you know, within hopefully not too long, it's probably not data yet, unless I got lucky. Sometimes it can take up to uh, 30 minutes to get your data in. But yeah, so like I said, you had a much different experience. True. Uh, when <laughs> on board yeah. with if this was problem. the onboarding process, I would have understood much better because I went in to add a keyword and saw all the different filters like all oh, and you are and and you all. It was like confusing yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, before you had to click in here and this is where you can manage things. Uh, you can do a lot of, uh, bulk keyword management so you can obviously we only have two here but you can add them to new keyword groups uh, right here from inside the ui and then down here it shows all of the keyword groups that you've added and you're like oh rank is actually a dumb one remove the keyword group you're not deleting any of the phrases it's a pretty powerful uh, way to manage it. Uh, uh, just a quick question. Uh, in Since we are in the screen, like, can we track uh, keywords based on the zip code of the state? Yep. So when you click this locales, uh, it just defaults to 10 common uh, locations. But you click in to browse all. And now we are, we've got hundreds of thousands of options. Uh, it defaults since uh, to date, the majority of our customers have been English US. Uh, we filtered to that, but you can get rid of those and show uh, any language or country that you want. Um, we've got, I don't know, pretty much every language there is. And you can filter to English. And let's say, you know, maybe you want to track this in India and I don't actually know if there are zip codes in India. Let's see. No, nope. we don't have uh, zip code support in India, I guess. Uh, for but, something like Canada? I think Sam is going to ask that. Uh, I was just I was just saying that I, I didn't know I was mute. Uh, yeah, Canada, you can try the postal code. I can give you my... So Canada, and then here... I'll have to check into that. You can put city. You can put city. Postal code. Yeah, go with city is fine too. Okay, we'll do city. I'm going to double check on zip code. We definitely do it in the U.S. Um, but city, Hamilton, we can Arnold. filter at any point. What are you going to say? 
We're going to suggest uh, just, Tor just Toronto, yeah. Uh, so, do you wanna do you wanna search uh, postal code? I'm I'm thinking it might show up. This type list here shows all the different things we can types of things. So I was expecting postal code to show up. I know it's in our database. Um, I'm not sure why it's not showing up here in the UI. I'm I'm guessing if you go on the on the right side, I can't read it. It says C. Uh, uh, yeah, if you try L L eight R, just try. It. Like you can you can try L eight R two K three. Does it show up? I'm in the U S right now. Okay. Okay, let's go back to Canada. L eight R. Yeah. Two K three. No, not this no. Yeah, I wasn't there. I'll double check on that. Uh, but we definitely can. So our our locations, for the most part, uh, they match the AdWords API. Um, they've got their list of CSV geo targets. So if you do do any PPC or you have mappings of these uh, AdWord IDs, uh, you can map that directly over into our system. Cool. Uh I think uh, I, we have covered most of the questions in the chat right now. I think everyone is now trying to test out the system personally and see whether it's how it works because it has so much powerful, but still there is a small learning curve for you guys because even I experienced it and and I think onboarding is much better right now, but during when I was trying, it was complex for me also. So hopefully it will yeah. get better and there are so much features and this data will definitely come well Andy when you understand what actually each single data means and how it can positively impact your uh, SERP tracking. So that's the most powerful I think. Yep, there's a lot of power and you know we've got up here there's this little help window that will open up our knowledge base. Um, that has some pretty good uh, things uh, getting started, uh, has some information here. Um, if you want to dive into the dashboards, uh, this is an overview of all the things available in the dashboards. You can also hit this little wide thing to uh, zoom it in here. You can also visit this at help.nozzle.io and check into the knowledge, knowledge base. Um, but that's one way to you know, get some self-service help. Uh, you can also always uh, click in here and uh, chat us directly. Yeah, I'm going to definitely jump into all the talks because I see the potential in this tool because it's not something, it's not easy, I'm going to be honest, but <laughs> once we set up everything and uh, get the value because it's mind boggling and I can, for example, the reason I'm interested in it, for example, in uh, in Tamil, in India industry. I have project on SEO Tamil, like uh, I targeting learning, uh, teaching SEO for users and everything. And I just don't have one single website. I like five different web properties. I have two different YouTube videos and I have a Udemy course page, which is public. So for me, I can essentially include all this into the SERP tracking, which I haven't been able to do that with other solution, which I'm personally using. and get this much in-depth information. So I'm really excited to learn more about this. Well, we're excited to have you. <laughs> yeah, and me too. And what about you, Sam? Do you have any final questions or uh, clear? You are muted. Sorry, I do have a question. Uh, can we can we change the email if we need to change an email or agency or, you know, uh, I know there is a, also the URL uh, changes, workspace name, rename, can we do all that? Um, so, some of it. Some so, of it. we'll come in here into settings. So you can rename the company all you want. Your slug is locked in. Locked um, in. You can update, this is, you know, if you want any billing, we'll send, even though it's a lifetime deal, we'll send out a monthly invoice showing your usage. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, additionally, uh, we we do offer a an extra thousand Q 
keyword polls a month if you do leave us a review on AppSumo. And so you'll see that in your invoice, that credit. Um, and there's user management. Uh, you can invite as many users as you want. And Sam, I want you to guess whether or not we charge extra for this. I hope not. <laughs> You're correct. <laughs> no extra. And, so, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so you can invite as many users as you want. And uh, on the flip side, uh, you can, in this workspaces, uh, you can belong to as many workspaces as you want. So if you're a, you know, a consultant and you, hopefully you're spreading the love and your clients have nozzle, uh, it makes it real easy to switch. You can go to a quick switcher and jump around between, um, we've got, you know, some different demo companies. So that's all we had to do to switch workspaces. So real easy to get around uh, between your workspaces and add and remove users. Got it. So for example, we can change email and also if in case if you want to change a uh, Slack, the only option is to delete and create a brand new one, right? We can't change the Slack, only the name. Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, I also got one question, uh, comment actually, like I think this is what most are expecting to see that uh, they're looking to see more training materials or webinars like this or just having feeling complex setup uh, for people who are not experts. Sure. Well, hopefully there's this. Uh, I think we're actually are putting together a video right now uh, with a, it won't be quite this long, um, but with a quick walkthrough um, yeah, we're constantly adding uh, more and more to our help and our knowledge base. And many, if not most of uh, our of these do have a video somewhere embedded uh, if you do want to wa watch something. Got it. And these guides are also updated with all the new features as the current state, right? not yep. outdated or something like that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to check out that and there's no question from me. I think if there's no question from Sam, we can end up this webinar right now. Okay. He has a question, I think he has a question. <laughs> You're muted, Sam. I have one last question, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I just want uh, just one answer. What is Nozzle in your words? Um, again, Rank Tracker, I think, sells nozzles short. Nozzle, we are essentially, like I say, uh, right on our uh, homepage. Our main thing is know everything Google knows and deal with it. Perfect. You've got access to every piece of information on the page, and you can drill into it as deep as you got, as you want. Honestly, you've probably only seen about 1% of the data that's available to you. True. Uh, just, to, just to add a final uh, conclusion based on what I say, like uh, I initially thought as, as a rank tracker because that's what mentioned on the title, that's what it's mentioning on the description, everything. And easily we get, can uh, compare with other rank tracking solution. But the point is like, the search experience has been continuously evolving to be just focusing on the just a number and the URL. It might be uh, most data most users need, but it, if we have a tool just evolves with that, that's actually a much more advantageous. I personally believe still they just need to get the onboarding much better and the uh, tracking the information, helpful information, but I sense a lot of potential once you know every single data and like what each of these data mean. For example, having metrics like about the fold with CTR, with the ability to track multiple web properties, that's interesting for me. So I think once you know the power of it, this should be the way to going forward because Google does not like organic results. Believe me, guys, it's no longer just first position <laughs> for you. 
So that's it. That's how I see personally. Also, like Nozzle is the way to see uh, what actually Google is showing, not just first place uh, position on the, all these things. We get to through it, and I will also create a separate review videos after I started testing the product and going through all these things. So I will keep you guys updated. Thank you again, Derek, for showing us and answering all the questions of Sam. Thank you, uh, Derek. <laughs> Well, thanks, nice. Sam. I appreciate all the questions, and I appreciate you having me on, Austin. It's a pleasure. And thank you, uh, Sam. Sam, do you have any final words? Final words? Uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, Are you going to buy it? I'm gonna buy it. Why not? <laughs> so, come on. It, 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 you know, it's a lot of the things that I have seen that I don't see it in other tools. Uh, so I was like, okay, blown away. I'm like, what the heck, man? This is like, you can see your track. You can, you can uh, by date, you can see it, right? So that was amazing. And, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna buy it for sure. And uh, uh, it's, 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 it's I, I just feel bad that I have one tool that I bought and I bought three <laughs> years on it and I have to buy another one. And I think the, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, definitely gamble on uh, Nozzle this time. That's good. And me too. It's no issues on that. And Derek, do you have any other final words you want to mention to all the viewers? I don't think so. I just spoke for an hour and a half and I think we're awesome. Like I said, we're committed to early adopters. We're not going to screw you over and take away features in the future. Uh, we're here to stay. Uh, we've got a sustainable business already and so you don't have to worry about us going under. Yeah, we, that is the most interesting. We see a lot of startups and everything. You guys have been in the business for, uh, I guess, four, seven years. Seven or years. Four. Yeah, so you've been in the and We are actually surprised to see a lifetime deal on this. That's what uh, we are shocked because it has been a real potential. So your goal for this is exposure, right? Yep, exactly. Got it. And thank Suppose you again. Getting, about it, getting, getting cool reviews like this. <laughs> and we are going to get the review also. Honest review. <laughs> That's true. And I'm sharing the honest review right now. <laughs> okay, cool. And thank you again, Derek. Thank you so much for giving us the time and going through all these features and answering the question. Really appreciate it. Can't wait to use it and see what is in potential for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you, guys. Let's uh, join in another session. Take care. Bye.